Feeling it, hey man. What's packing everybody? It's your host, Godchild, first of his name. Back with another video on the What's Packing Sports Show channel. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, like, thumbs up, um, notification bells, and comment like prayer emoji. Comment, please. We talking Tuesdays with Aaron. It's Thursday. Tuesday was two days ago. Aaron was on the Pat McAfee show. And he talked about the game with Philadelphia. They whooped their ass 30 to 16. It was close from like the third to the fourth quarter. End of the third. Beginning or middle of the fourth quarter. Then they did their thing. Moved to 9-3. I digress. He mentioned after the game, he talked to Carson Wentz. As you know, he got benched in favor of the rookie out of Alabama, Hurts. He put in a little bit of work. He was able to actually score them two touchdowns. Actually, they scored one on the kickoff, a punt return, and then they scored again. He just made it close. But after the game, he spoke with Hurts and Wentz, and then he didn't really tell McAfee what he said to Wentz, but the gist was, I guess, sort of, hey, I know what just happened. You just got benched. You know what I'm saying? It's probably the first time it's happened. It's the first time it's happened. You happened on a game, and the game, you got benched. This kid played well. You know, keep your head up. You're good. He even said, I like his tape. I'm a fan of his game, which is what really sparked this whole conversation for me because I was like, would he have said the same thing if it wasn't, a, like, what would he have said if it was a player that he didn't like? You know what I'm saying? That he wasn't a fan of his game. He thought he maybe sucked or something. Like, what would he say? Would he say the same thing and just keep it, you know what I'm saying, GQ or whatever, was this, uh, you know what I'm saying, PC? Or would he be honest? Because the thing I like about the whole Tuesday with Aaron with Pat McAfee is it's actually a very honest conversation. Aaron Rodgers kind of lets his guard down a little bit. He really opens up on some of the stories and kind of gives you a behind the scenes look, which is cool. And I feel like he's a little more honest than I've ever heard him be before with in front of the media, especially on some of these other topics that like outside of football. But this was like a football topic, but also encapsulated like a life topic. Like it was, it shows you a little bit of the humanity, you know what I'm saying, of Aaron Rodgers or just football players in general. They understand how it feels. He's on the top of his game. He's maybe about to be MVP this year. But here's this kid that everyone sort of uh, adorned uh, with this crown of the next group of guys, um, Wentz. And he definitely, I remember one year, like maybe his second year, he was in the MVP talks. And it was like, okay. But now since the the Super Bowl and he got replaced with Foles and he's kind of falling down and falling down. He's kind of regressed. And this year he got benched for a rookie. And they just paid him all this money. It's all this turmoil. What's going on? But Rodgers takes a moment to just sit there and say, look, man, I'm, a, I'm assuming, right? I'm just assuming what he maybe talked about was like, hey, man, keep your head up. Take a look at this kid Tannehill. He was in Miami first, like, couple of years of his, of his career. Everybody thought that they reached to take him, and then they thought it was a mistake to take him because he wasn't really panning out. But he gets moved from Miami to Tennessee, and now he's played in the AFC Championship game. He's got a team this year that's poised to make another championship run. Derrick Henry and some other pieces, especially the receivers. And it's like, look how his career changed. Now, I don't know if Rodgers said that to Wentz, but that's an example right there for a lot of people who are ready to count Carson Wentz out. I'm not saying I feel like he's as good as he's advertised, but I know he's got talent. And I think that maybe in a better situation, some people are saying maybe the Colts. He has ties there. Um, with the head coach being there, and it's like, maybe. I saw what he did for Tannehill. Maybe that could do the same for Wentz. Either way, I think Hurts can play. But I wonder what Rodgers would have said if there was a quarterback there who he didn't respect. And that just makes me think about, like, the Detroit situation. Detroit fired their head coach and general manager. They were able to stop the bleeding. As a matter of fact, the Packers play them this week. I did a preview show on that week 14 on my uh, channel. You can check the link in the end of this video. I'll put it in the little box or whatever. And um, 
they were able to turn their season around, kind of, sort of. They're still in the playoff race. They have lost three of the last four, but they won last week, coming from behind and beat the Bears, who still suck, just in case you didn't know <sighs> or forgot or needed a reminder, but you shouldn't because the Bears still suck always and forever. Go Pack Go. But, hey, this game could be a – I'm not even going to say that word. But, you know, the Packers need to say focus. But I was talking about the coach situation. They removed Patricia, who was of the Belichick branch. And the only one of the Belichick branches that has actually worked out is Vrabel. All the other parts of his tree look like the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. And if you haven't seen that yet, Google it. And that you'll, you'll understand because it's bare, okay? <laughs> like, not a lot of success. But this bare guy, you know, he's already got them cut with, a, you know, winning, <laughs> which is they needed. But after Patricia got fired, there was a couple of players that no, were no longer on the team but had got traded or released and signed on other teams, and they would go on to record to say, like, kind of disparaging remarks against Patricia, one dude said about time or something like that. Another guy was like, you know, talking about how he just didn't respect players. And one guy was talking about how he almost got in a fight with him or he wanted to fight him after some comments he said. So it's like, but when he was on the team and those guys were on the team and he was the coach, they never said that in public. It was never reported. You know, they never spoke candidly or openly about it. But once he leaves, now this stuff comes out. And I feel like maybe this could happen with the Rogers McCarthy era. Once it all said done, maybe 10 years down the road. Or, like, what else could be going on? And this is not a story. I'm not trying to be salacious. You know, I love that word. It's really just about actually what I thought. Or it's interesting to think, like, how players tell you something for face value, but underneath it could have, you know, other implications. I just wonder what Rogers would have said if it wasn't a guy that he respected. Or does does he res- do you think they just respect everyone who's in the NFL? And they say, like, hey man, he any no matter what quarterback it was of all the thirty two teams, and maybe even some of the backups if they came into play, Rogers would just know something about them or just would say I've watched the tape and just have just sort of a general, sort of nice guy statement to make about whoever the person was, if it came up. And then, you know, they have video of them trying to talk to him. Like they said, a lot of young guys want to talk to Rogers because he's a GOAT. Or he's like a candidate, you know? It's like the Pirate King, you know, in One Piece. Rogers is definitely a candidate for the GOAT status. He's got a lot to more to accomplish, hopefully. And if he does, I think he can get his name into that discussion legitimately. But right now, Brady is the GOAT. I'm sorry. Sue me, whatever. Thumbs down if you want. But at the very least, prayer emoji, comment. Um, I just wonder what he said. But then there were some other things he talked about on his show appearance with McCaffrey. Uh, he talked about the one show everyone was, was telling him to look, in, look into. Um, undoing. And I think I have seen it a few times and I meant to watch it. But he, he didn't really have good things to say about it. And it, were, and, and it reminded me of this show that everyone's watched and everyone loves. It's kind of an older show. But I had never seen it. And for some reason, I decided to watch it this COVID season. And um, it was uh, Breaking Bad. <laughs> and I'm not going to say it wasn't a good show because it was a good show. But I just honestly feel like it should have ended after season two. And there were a lot of things that happened in that show that... I didn't want to say a lot, but like at least three or four things that happened in that show that just didn't make sense to me. Didn't. It was almost like plot armor. It was just like Deus Ex, you know, Mechana type shit. It's like, or even if it didn't solve a problem, it presented a problem. It's like the opposite of Deus Ex Mechana. It presented a problem that to me didn't need to be there. And it's like, you're just presenting problems in order to create. A, a scenario that really doesn't make sense it's just to keep the show running or, you know, keep things quote unquote, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, all right, 
I didn't really fuck with that. I didn't think that was cool. I didn't like that. They could have ended after season two. They had a perfect out. They made the big deal. They could have created a little more drama that would have shifted the perspective of the show to more of an ending. Um, but ultimately, they got the deal done, man. Spoiler alert. You know what I'm saying? If you haven't seen it, spoiler alert. I'm not going to go into too many details, but they, he had a goal in mind, a dollar amount that he wanted to reach. They fucking reached it. And then it's like they kept the show going. I don't think they needed to. But I did watch the Queen's Gamut. The main the main actress is is she's got a like an odd eroticism to her. She she's attractive, but she's not. And she, but but she's a, she's there's, she's a, there's something about her that is a little different. You know, it's like that chick from uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. You know, but instead of emo, it was more like sort of southern or just like sweet or something. And then they talked about their favorite Christmas movies, and Roger said he wanted to say Die Hard just to stir things up. And I think Die Hard is a great choice. But he said maybe um, White Christmas from the 40s, Elf, and the old Rudolph movies. Abominable Snowman, some of his favorites. The Abominable Snowman is good. The original Rudolph is good, but honestly, one of my favorites is uh, Santa Claus with Tim Allen. And I don't know if that's like a politically correct thing to say. I feel like he's maybe he was in the media for some like political stuff, but on the wrong, you know, for the wrong reasons, or, or just people were criticizing maybe something, something like that. I feel like he was in the news for something, or maybe it was the Me Too movement. I'm not trying to put that on him, and maybe I should say allegedly. Just to to cover my own CYO, CYA, but it's like I feel like there was some reason why people weren't fucking with him. But I always thought his show on on, on uh, what was that ABC was great. Two time or Home Improvement, I think his show was called Two. He had a show within a show that was a great concept. A show within a show, that was great. It was honestly like the precursor to reality TV. Anyways, man, it's your boy God, y'all. First of his name, as always, go, pack, go. Please subscribe, like, notify yourself, and comment on the videos. I would really appreciate it. Everybody, peace.